Hello lords and ladies, welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. If you're like me, then you more than likely spent most of this issue wondering if you somehow missed the previous issue. Then you actually went back and checked and, no, oh no, you didn't miss an issue, so what is going on with this one? Well, as it turns out, and we're getting to spoilers much quicker than usual here, it's all a fever dream brought on by Velma's flu. There was no Monstrovia, no human resistance called Human Town, and certainly no Velma, warrior queen of the monsters. Which is actually a relief, because as one of the characters mentions themselves, it sounds like a badly written comic. Not that the premise wouldn't have made for a lovely alternate reality, which in a way it kind of is for the purpose of this issue, but it just wasn't all that great either. While I was relieved to reach the final two pages and learn it was just a dream, I was also more than a little peeved. After the events of the last issue, I could have sworn on my mother's non-existing grave that we were ramping up for a good few story-heavy, action-packed issues. But instead, we got more filler. We didn't even get a scrappy story for our troubles. It's not that filler can't be entertaining or fun, but I can't really call issue 10 anything but an annoyance. An issue that can easily just be skipped entirely once collected in trade. Unless you just really are curious what kind of world Velma dreamt up under the influence of drugs and a fever. I think it would have almost been better if we started off knowing she was dreaming than jumping into the fever world. Obviously, the purpose of this little issue was to have us all scratching our heads pondering why the story jumped so far ahead, while also possibly allowing the writers and artists a little breathing room to finish future issues. But even the last issue was almost filler in nature. This one was most definitely the worst issue I've read in this series so far, and if you're watching this prior to buying the issue, just skip it instead. Nothing of note happens, and I basically summed up the points of interest already. But surely archaic, there were some positives. You may be asking me through your computer screens, and yes, there were. I may not be fond of an eloquently speaking Scooby-Doo, but it was pretty funny. Oh, and Daphne died. I will say this about her death, though. It wasn't all that gruesome, which is odd considering plenty of deaths have been shown, or at least what was left afterwards. This was either just a conscience choice, or the effects of Velma's mind. You know, like, she doesn't really hate Daphne, though even though she does kill her in her dream, it wasn't extremely gory. I don't know, there's not a lot to dissect here. Oh, and the final reveal of Velma promising to save the world was a great scene, too. I'm glad to see that she's not running away from all her problems, but that's kind of it. I guess the art wasn't so awful either. Although, no offense to the artist, but it makes the regular art for the series look even better by comparison. And those are my thoughts on the issue. Now, what were yours? If you actually went out and bought this one. Share them down below. Thanks for watching and check back in next month around this time for my next Scooby Apocalypse review. Hopefully it'll be better. Take care.